Hello. You asked, so I shall answer. Hey everybody, 2 through 9 am I here, and it is finally here, the thing I have been waiting to do for some, for quite some time, but never really found the right time to do it until today, of course. I mean, it's not really today, it's, a, it's the day before, but that's not the point. It is February 3rd, 2019, also known as 2 3 one, nine. So I had to do something special, so here I am doing my first ever Q&A video. I asked you guys to ask me any questions you wanted, and you delivered big time. I read every single one of the questions, and I'm going to answer every single one of the questions right now. So I really don't know how long this video is going to be, but I think I have enough questions to answer that this should be a pretty good length-sized video. I've taken all the questions you guys have asked, I think I've got every single one here, and I'm not going to say who asked what question because there were a lot of you guys that asked the same question multiple times, so instead I'm just going to thank every person who asked the question right now. So a big thanks to Musical Meloetta, Mopar Man, Dean O, Greninja Arxy, Sophisticated Squirtle, Thanow, Sithism Bath, I hope I said that right. Pichu X Cast Form 123, Susan Lucario Fan 16, Tree Espion, Glyscore Games, Teddy Garman, Emerald Star Productions, Romans TBI, and Super Show. Thank you so much for your questions. So, I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's just jump straight into the questions, full speed ahead. Let's start with the first question What is your favorite color? Um, right now, I would say my favorite color is blue, but sort of like a lighter, like cyan shade of blue. It used to be yellow when I was very, very little, and then it was green, but now it's blue. And I've sort of always favored darker colors for some reason as I've gotten older, even though this is a lighter shade of blue, but whatever. So to answer your question, a nice cyan blue. What is your favorite food? That is a tough question. I love me some food, but I would have to say good old-fashioned Italian spaghetti and meatballs with garlic bread really really good can never go wrong there what is your career um i think i've mentioned this before in a couple of videos but right now my career is that i work in our town's local movie theater in the mall i've been a concessionist there for about for close to a year i've been there about 10 months which is crazy to think about i've had quite I've had, I, I love the job there so much it's really good money i've had Tons of funny experiences there. I could make a whole video about those if I wanted to, and I might. Who knows? And I've made and I've met some pretty awesome people there. It's a really good job, really well-paying job. I've tried to. I've actually tried to apply there um, a couple times in years past, but those that didn't really fall through until finally last year that managed to work, and there I am now. What is your favorite TV show? Ooh, that is a tough question to ask. I don't know if I have a favorite TV show, a number one favorite TV show, but I definitely have quite a few that would be considered up there. I mean, Survivor, of course. You gotta put that up there. That's That's been a huge part of my life ever since I was like six years old. In terms of sitcoms, I really enjoy The Big Bang Theory, and I especially love Friends. I watch them all the time in reruns. I can quote you on pretty much almost any episode of those if you wanted me to. I also like The Goldbergs, that's a pretty good show. This Is Us has always been a pretty good show. Never fails to make me emotional. It doesn't make me cry, I should say that. It takes a lot for me to cry. Like, a lot. I think I've only cried once during the show, but that's it. Um, what else, what else, what else? In terms of cartoons, I've always loved regular show. Um, I just started watching Rick and Morty, that's hilarious. I love Saturday Night Live, that's something I've, I've always wanted to see the show live. Like, in person, that's something that's been on my bucket list. Whose Line Is It Anyway? That's been a huge inspiration for me comedically. Um, I think that's about it. There's probably a ton more that I'm missing, but that's like the general um, proximity of shows that I like. I mostly veer around a certain lane, and that's comedy. What is your favorite animal or pets? I don't really have a favorite animal so much, but in terms of pets, um, I'm definitely a cat person more than a dog person. Nothing against dogs, they're just really, like, hyperactive, they're always in your face. I was never the biggest fan of them as a kid. Um, cats, they just sit there, they do nothing, and they're nice and fluffy, and they're nice to cuddle with. We used to have a cat, and I'm gonna tell you this whole well... Okay, here's a really funny story. You know what our cat's name was? Jake. And my parents got the cat before they had me. 
Let me explain this. Um, before I was born, my parents actually had two cats, Jake and Jewel. And when I was finally thought of and was conceived, um, my parents were thinking of a name and they liked the name Jacob, but they're like, we already have the cat named Jake. I don't know if it would work. But my great-grandmother, who we call Ma, she lives in Tennessee, and she's very religious. She was always like, oh, Jacob, that's a really good Bible name. I, th I think you should name him Jacob. I, th I love that. So they're just like, eh, it's a good name. Let's just do it. So I was named Jacob, and, I had, and we had the cat named Jake, and the rest was history. I, did, I didn't really coexist with Jewel that much, because shortly after I was born, Jewel didn't really like... Well, I, did, I, don't, I didn't know this firsthand, my parents just told me this, but Jewel didn't really like all the attention I was getting, so she um, marked her territory, I guess you could say, by my crib, and she was just acting out a lot, and my parents just got rid of her. But Jake, he was a really good cat. Um, my dad was really close to him. My dad's a huge cat person. Um, I had, we had Jake for a long time, but he passed away just a few years ago, unfortunately. But he was a really good cat. And... I'm o I would absolutely be open to getting a cat in the future, and so would my dad, but my mom's saying that's never going to happen again. <laughs> um, what is your favorite place in the world? My favorite place in the world? That's a tough question, but I would, I would have to guess it's some, you're considering like some place that I had ever visited, and my favorite place I've ever visited is probably Los Angeles. I visited there in 2014 over the summer. It was fantastic. I've always wanted to go there, and I'd honestly love to live there in the future. I think it's great. I mean, I want to go into show business, even though I know that tends to be kind of difficult to make it into, but I just love the environment, I love the scenery, and I love how it's sunny there and not... and how it, there's like barely any snow, whereas right now I live in Michigan, where it is, um, the, it is the state of really confusing weather like just a few days ago we had record wind chills for like like the rec like the record had broken the record previously set a long time ago we had wind chills that were considered like negative 40 degrees yet now it's the weekend and the temperatures are getting up to regular 40 degrees and 50 degrees so you go from frigid wasteland to relatively okay weather in just a matter of days which is which kind of sums up Michigan's weather perfectly, how it just changes at the drop of a hat. But I would love to live in Los Angeles. I've always wanted to go there again. Hopefully I'll be able to go there again sometime soon. What country would you love to travel to? Well, I've actually never left um, North America and I've only left the United States for, I guess, five minutes because when I was in sixth grade, we were on a trip to Mackinac and we were in, I think, I don't remember where we were, but I think we crossed the Canadian border for a few minutes and then just came back. But I don't, I don't know if I count that too much. But I've always wanted to visit Europe, um, London, France. Um, I see someone's underpants. Um, I've, Germany, Italy, all those places. Really, really beautiful. Really pretty. Great music. Great scenery. They just seem like they'd be a lot of fun. Who is your favorite singer? Um, that's another tough question for me because I listen to music religiously. I love all genres of music. I listen to um, pop. I listen to rock. I listen to a, a little bit of country, not a lot. Um, I love R&B soul. That's pretty good too. I don't listen to hip hop that much, like at all. I think I have like maybe two hip hop songs on my playlist. That's it's just not my thing, but. The main genre I tend to focus to is either like acoustic folk rock or hardcore pop punk. Those are like the two genres I listen to the most. But my favorite singer would have to be Ed Sheeran. He's probably the one that's influenced me the most in terms of music. He's what made me want to learn how to play guitar, which is something um, I'll get to in a little bit with one of the later questions and just his musical style and the way he sings is just really awesome. I actually finally saw him in concert a few months ago. Really, really great show, a lot of fun, love to see him again. In terms of other artists um, that I really enjoy, I love All Time Low, I've seen them in concert too. My parents went with me to both concerts, they loved the Ed Sheeran one, they hated the All Time Low one, it was not their scene at all. Um, I also love The Fray, I love Ben Rector, James Bay is awesome, um, Yellow Card, was a pretty cool band, and I'm probably blanking on all... Those are all that come to mind right now. 
but there's a lot of bands I'm really into. I could make a full list right now, but I'll leave it at that. That gives you a good taste of what I listen to. What is your major in college? So right now I'm going to community college and I've been there for about, like this is my fourth semester, so I've been there about two years. And my plan is to do one more semester in the fall and then to transfer to a regular college um, with an associates in humanities. Right now my plan is that, I, like I said, I've always wanted to go into the entertainment industry, whether it be regular actor, voice actor, or even something behind the scenes. That's the big thing here. I'm keeping my options open. Like I said, it's very, very difficult to make it in the entertainment industry as an actor, and I realize that. So that's why I'm keeping my options open. I'm happy with whatever it is I'm able to do, whether I'm editing a movie, whether I'm directing something, whether I'm writing something. No matter what I do, I'll be happy with it because it's all something I want to experience some point in my life. Do I watch anime? And if so, what are my favorites? Um, sorry guys, anime is not really my thing. I've tried to watch it before, it's just not really ever something that's clicked with me. I've known a couple people who are really, really into anime. So I've been exposed to it greatly, but it's just not for me. There is only one anime that I can consider, well, that, that I, there's really only one anime that I've sort of watched, and it's not even a good anime. I mean, I liked it at the time, but now that I'm older, I'm like, no, it was bad. But, and all you anime lovers out there are gonna be like, oh my god, you watched that? Like, like, what is wrong with you? That's a bad anime. But the one I watched was Sword Art Online. And I know Sword Art Online, it's not good. And I, I will say this, there are still some things I thought were all right about it. I, did, I don't hate it as much as everybody else did, but I can absolutely agree with people in saying that there's a lot it needs to improve and a lot that it could have done better. But I watched like maybe the first half of the first season and then I just stopped. I just lost interest. But I guess I'd be open to watching anime in the future, but right now it, I just don't really have any immediate plans to and I'm just not really interested in any of the new animes out there and what they have to do. Sorry about that. Do I speak any foreign languages? Um, the only one I really speak a little bit is Spanish because I've taken some Spanish classes. I took one in 8th grade and ninth grade and then I've had to take Spanish again for college. I took it last semester and I'm taking it right now. It's still not great, but it's, it's getting better. I mean, I know all the basic sayings, you know, como te llamas, me llamo Jake Schaff, blah blah blah. But, I mean, when it's a little better, I don't know, maybe I can in incorporate a Spanish-speaking character into a band and showcase it off. Who knows? I don't know, we'll see. Any memes that I liked? <sighs> I really don't know how to answer this question. I'm not a big follower of memes. I don't really care about them that much. I mean, sure, there's some that I think are funny, but there's none that, like, I've really ever, like, used or utilized. I mean, if I had to pick some that I liked, I guess one that I always, one that I, I genuinely thought was really funny was the, the We Are Number One meme from a few years ago with Stefan Stephenson from Lazy Town. That one was really funny, and it also had a good met, and it also had a good meaning behind it. Like you were doing it to help raise awareness for his, um, for cancer research to help him beat cancer. I'm glad that it was able to help with his cancer for the time being. It is unfortunate that the cancer, of course, returned and he did pass away, but he made a lot of people laugh, and he will forever live on on the internet. That is for sure. Other ones that I liked, I guess the only other one that comes to mind, and this was one I actually thought about making a joke about with Abandoned, was the one from a, from a few months ago when like the Smash trailer came out, where all the where all the characters were getting like vaporized and they were just disappearing. I was think like I, I always thought that one was really funny. Every time I saw a meme for that, I was I laughed my butt off. I always thought. I thought that was a pretty good one, and I guess hand in hand the Avengers disappearing meme where you're just talking and you're like, oh my god, I don't feel so good. I thought that one, that one was a good one too. I, I guess that's the best way to answer that question, but I'm not a big follower of memes. Um, what are the three most iconic memes you're tired of hearing? Oh my god, I, again, I really don't know how to answer this question. So you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to skip this one, I'm sorry, I just... I can't really, 
I don't really know. I like I don't really care about any of the memes that much. There's none that I'm really hating, so I'm just gonna pass on this one. Sorry about that. What are your top five favorite video games of all time? Now, I'm actually not that big of a video game player. I, in fact, I, I'm. It's very, very rare that I actually play games, and it's very rare that I play a game that's not Pokemon. That's usually my go-to. That's always been a big part of me ever since I was a little kid. So, I guess my top five favorite games, in no particular order... My favorite of the Pokemon games, I would have to say... That's actually tough, and I, I guess I have something else to confess. I've never actually beaten a Pokemon game. And let me explain, let me explain. I'm that kind of person where I'll play the game for a long time, and then I'll like set it down, and I'll come back to it like months later, and I'm like, oh, this is crap, start over. And that's been a huge repeating cycle for me, and I'm really trying to to break this cycle. That's one of my New Year's resolutions for this year, to actually beat a Pokemon game. And I'm pretty close to it. Last time I played Alpha Sapphire, I had seven badges, and I have a pretty good team. Right now my team is Blaziken, Swellow, Manectric, Sharpedo, Sableye, and I have a Snow Run that I intend to evolve into a Glalie. I think that's a pretty solid team. And we'll see what happens. Hopefully, I actually make it to the end of that. But if I had to pick a favorite Pokemon game, I guess I'd have to pick Platinum, because that was the first real Pokemon game I started playing. Even though I actually had Crystal before that, and I don't even know how we got Crystal. I think I was having a birthday party, and somebody left it behind at the house, and we just never returned it, because when I first started playing it, there was like a full save file on it. But me being me, it was like, eh, delete. So, whoever's, um, sir, uh, whoever's Pokemon Crystal game that was, I'm sorry, I just, I just never got around to giving it back to you, I'm really sorry. But, okay, I guess Pokemon Platinum would be up there. I'm really big into, like, the Super Smash Brothers games, so I'd have to put Brawl and the new one, um, for the Nintendo Switch up there too, Ultimate, which I have, for proof, and it is fantastic. And then, so that's three. Another big game for me was Super Mario Galaxy. That's been something I've wanted to play again for a really long time. I might do that soon. So that's four. And then number five for me was probably the video game that helped shape my five-year-old self. SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom on Xbox. If you have never played that video game, you are missing out. Even if you don't like SpongeBob and you don't know anything about SpongeBob, I recommend you play that game because you will have tons of fun with it. I've beaten the game, I've had a lot of fun with it, I would gladly play it again in a heartbeat. It was one of the best, and I can, and I'm still, and I will still gladly say this, it is one of the best video games I've ever played. So top five would be Pokemon Platinum, Smash Brawl, Smash Ultimate, Mario Galaxy, and Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom. What are your top five favorite starter Pokemon? Okay. So, again, this is going to be in no particular order, but um, my top five, well, my favorite grass starter is Trico, and my favorite fire starter is Torchic, so that's always made the Hoenn games very difficult on who to pick. But if I had to pick, I'd probably pick Blaziken, or Torchic over Trico, because Blaziken's always been one of my favorites. But Trico, Torchic, and my favorite water starter type has been Oshawott. So it'd be those three, and then let me just think through... It's no one from Gen 2, no one from Gen 4, because no reason, they're just not, just not crazy obsessed with them. Um, Superior and Embor, not them. I know I keep calling them by the last evolutions, that's just what I tend to do. Um, Gen 6, Chespin's alright. Ooh, Fennec is pretty good too. Greninja, I love Greninja. I don't have Gen, I don't have the Gen 7 game, so I can't really, um, I can't really... Um, pick any of them if, since I haven't used any of them. But I guess if I had to pick my top five, they would be Trico, Torchic, um, Oshawott, Fennekin, and Blastoise. Those would be my top five, with Froki in a very, very close sixth. What are my top five favorite Pokemon? Um, well, my favorite Pokemon for the longest time was Scizor, but that recently changed to Gallade like a couple years ago. But those two are definitely up there along with Blaziken, Samurott, and my last one, um, I would have to say... 
Dusknor. I've always had... I've never used a Dusknor before, but Dusknor's always just seemed really cool, really mysterious. I would love to use Dusknor, so that would be my top five. Dusknor, Samurott, Blaziken, Scizor, and Galate. If you could be any Pokémon, who would you be? I guess I'd have to go with Galate again, and the reason he's my favorite Pokémon is just because... I mean, I don't really have a reason. He just looks awesome. He's just got that cool, badass stance with the two blades and the helmets. He's just always appealed to me. He's always stood out, and he just seems like he would easily kick a lot of ass and just, like, slice someone to bits. And I like slicing things to bits. Um, if you could make a dream Pokemon team, what would it be? One starter and one legendary included. So, for the starter Pokemon, I would probably pick Blazik or Torchic to Blaziken, because that's always been the number one starter Pokemon for me. And then for the legendaries, you know, this may seem weird, I'm, I don't really use legendaries that much, because the thing is, like, you grab the legendaries late in the game, yet you're already so used to the team you have, or you know what their weaknesses are, you know what their strengths are, and then you just get this new guy who just easily um, destroys pretty much a lot of the things in its path, and, that, and I feel like using a legendary kind of takes away the challenge a little bit, and I feel it would it just it, it would just mean a lot more to me if I beat the game without a legendary, and then use the legendaries for the after game, if I would play the if I ever make it to the after game. But if I had to pick one legendary Pokemon, um, I want to pick Moltres, but I already have Blaziken as a fire type, so I guess I would pick... I guess I pick Suicune. Suicune's always been pretty cool. Nice ice type to round out. You got fire and ice so far. So Blaziken and Suicune would be the starter and the legendary. And then the other ones, of course, I'd pick Gallade. And then for a water type, a nice water type, I'd probably... I mean, you can't go wrong with Gyarados. He's, he'd be a pretty nice pick. But Gyarados is too... It's too... Like, a too easy of a choice. But... And what the hell, I'll still pick Gyarados. Gyarados... Blaziken, Suicune, Gallade, um, I'll throw Dustinor in there, and then the last one, I need an electric type, so why not go with Manectric? What are my plans and goals for 2019? To get more than four episodes released throughout the year. That is the number one goal. I had the goal of trying to finish the series before 2019 was up, I don't think that's going to happen, but... The number one goal is to try to be a lot more productive on YouTube this year. Other little goals are, of course, to beat the Pokemon game, and another one is to actually learn to do something I've wanted to learn for a really long time, and that is to play the guitar. I got this guitar for Christmas just a few weeks ago, and I think it sounds pretty good. I've always wanted to learn how to play it, but I never really found the right amount of time, but that's one thing I want to do for 2019, and that is learn how to play this thing because I don't want it to just sit around in my room as a decoration, no. I actually want to use this thing. So, that's a pretty big goal for me in 2019. Alright, so that was about the first half of the questions. Those were just related to pretty much everyday facts about me. So the second half of the questions are more related to TPIs and the actual show itself. So let's get into those right now. Why did you start making TPIs and how did you start making TPIs? Um, the reason I started making TPIs is simply just because it combines two things I've always really, really loved, which is Pokemon and reality competition shows. And since Pokemon has a wide variety of characters, uh, many of which could easily be turned into very funny characters for a show like this, I thought it seemed like a really fun thing for me to do and a, and a nice hobby to pass the time while I dealt with school and all the other, and all the other trials and tribulations of growing up. Um, and how I started making TPIs, I guess the same way we all started making TPIs, just me, microphone, and a computer and PowerPoint. Just slap everything together and hope it turns out alright. What inspired Abandoned? Um, I, you know what? Because I've made two TPIs before this, or I've tried to make two TPIs before this, and that was mostly just something because I... It wasn't really something... There wasn't that much inspiration behind them. I was just kind of doing whatever I felt was right and doing... Just slapping everything together last minute. There wasn't a whole lot of work in this. But Abandoned is great... Is just really inspired by... I guess... You know, I don't really know what inspired Abandoned. Because it's got a lot of implements of 
classic reality shows like Survivor and Big Brother, and I've tried to implement some of those stereotypes you tend to see on shows like that, yet I also wanted it to have more of a sitcom -y feel than my last two shows had, because that's the big thing for me, and that's comedy. And there are times I've actually considered abandoning more of a sitcom than a pseudo-reality show. So, I guess what inspired Abandon is just the things that inspired me. Comedy, and just loving to see competition like this on TV. I guess that answers the question, I'm not really sure. Who are my top five favorite characters from Abandon? This is a really tough question for me to answer. A, because I've written all these characters, I've... I mean, they're all... They're all my creations, it's hard to pick some over the others, but also because I'm scared to say top five because I'm worried you guys would think, oh, those are his top five, that means they're gonna make the final five, and that's not gonna be the case. That's not what's gonna happen. But I guess with top five, I'd probably pick the five most creative characters I've thought of for Abandoned. Or the five I've had the most fun voicing. So, one character that's up there right off the bat is probably Grovile. He's just always been hilarious, and when I wanted to start doing a little more edgier stuff for this TPI, I'm like, you know what, I gotta incorporate maybe a, a little bit of drugs into this. I need a pothead. Q Grovile. He seemed to fit the mold pretty, pretty well, and I've loved all the material that's come, of, come out of his mouth. I haven't really written too much for him lately, so far, like, in the past episodes, but I think he's gonna have a lot of good stuff coming up later on. I guess another one would be Magby, because he always has held a special place in my heart, because Magby has been the character I've always sort of based off of myself. And I don't really know how that happened or how I ended up choosing Magby, it just happened. Just his mannerisms, his constant quoting of pop culture, and hell, I even incorporated the Asperger's thing. That's something I've had to deal with for 19 years of life, and I wanted to to go a little deeper with Magby, and I wanted to incorporate that into the show. I thought that'd be a nice big revelation for him. That'd be a nice, that'd be an obstacle for him to have to overcome a little bit, for him to have to grow from. And I think he's doing a really great job, and I really enjoy voicing Magby, and I hope you guys will enjoy what else Magby has in store. Other characters, I guess Bergmite, despite my mistake in choosing to bring him back, I did enjoy the material Bergmite had for his first few episodes. I knew he had to be good in small doses and I didn't really handle that well, but from the stuff I did with him the first few episodes, I loved it. I thought it was fresh, I thought it was creative, and I'm glad that you guys were really receptive and really you really loved Bergmite too. I guess Quilava would be another one because of her storyline. She's a little bit different than the Cinequil or Quilava I had in my previous TPI. Whereas that Quilava knew she was gay, but she just wasn't, like, out of the closet yet. And I guess this is kind of the same thing, but I'm going a little more in depth, I'm going a lot deeper, and this next episode, not to give anything away, but it's going to give you some answers to some questions you've probably had from Quilava's storyline. And I, I think you guys will really enjoy what I have prepared for that. So that's four, and then the last character... Hell, the last character is Riolu, because I loved the sharp left turn I took with Riolu, and I actually talked about this in a really old video that's not on my channel anymore. I took it down, but in my very first TPI, I was going to implement that same twist with Riolu, where he was going to seem like the nice, smart, charming guy, and then a few episodes in, he turns on one of his close allies and is revealed, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm the bad guy. I'm the guy you should be worried about, not them. And I never ended up making it that far in that first TPI, and then I just sort of shelved the idea, and when I made Abandon, I'm like, no, I gotta do this again. I gotta give them something that they're not gonna see is coming. Especially since Riolu's character type has been very, very stereotypical over the years, how he's always the honorable leader, how he's always the nice guy. I wanted to give you guys something different, and I think I was able to execute that really, really well. So, top five. Grovile, Magby, Riolu, Quilava, and Bergmites. That's the five. <clears throat> Who is my favorite character to write for? I think I just said in the last question, but Grovile. Because I just love all the stuff I come up with for him. He's just got some of the most hilarious dialogue, crazy stories, crazy shenanigans, and I've also been able to implement some real-life stuff into Grovile, too. Um, there was a scene in 
the fourth episode, The Lemon Conspiracy, where he's in the confessional and he's talking about how he first got into smoking weed. And he's like, oh yeah, I was just um, at the airport with my parents and some guy dropped a bong right at my feet. Picked it up, shoved it in my bag, and I've been smoking it ever since. Well, <laughs> there is a story to that. It's a little different, but here's what happened. It was Thanksgiving 2016. A Bandit had not premiered yet, but I was in the middle of writing episode 4 script. And like I said earlier in the video, I have a great grandmother who lives in Tennessee. And before Thanksgiving, we all flew down to Tennessee to visit her for a little bit. And then we were on our way back. Because how it worked is we... Like, we're from Michigan, we flew to Atlanta, and then we just rented a car and drove the way up to Tennessee. And then, when it was time for us to go, we just did the opposite. We drove back to Atlanta, flew back to Michigan. But, when we got to the airport, we were trying to rush to our gates a little bit, and we came across this guy sleeping at, close to, like, this pillar in the airport, and you could tell he, like, wasn't doing the greatest, he was kind of, like, shaggy, dirty, pretty sure he was homeless. And then he just rolled over and something fell out of his pocket, rolled right at our feet. It wasn't a bong, it was a crack pipe. And I didn't think I quite knew what it was at the time, and my parents were just like, yeah, that's a crack pipe. And I'm like, or and my parents were just like, yeah, that's a crack pipe. And I'm like, oh my god. So then we get to our terminal, we're waiting for the plane, and I have my laptop out, and I'm typing out stuff for the episode, and I'm like, oh, I gotta put this in. This is, this is, this is too perfect to pass up. So, it's moments like that that I really enjoy writing for Grovile. And again, I kind of wish I did a little more in the past couple episodes because he's been kind of in the background lately, but I think that's going to change pretty soon. You'll have to wait and see. Who is my least favorite character to write for? Now, I actually talked about this in an episode, the first episode of Left Behind, but there's one character that I genuinely did not like writing for, and that was Mind Fu, because... As I've kept saying, the most important thing to me is comedy, and there was no comedy with Mindfu. All she did was just get angry and yell at people. That was her whole character. And to be honest, I'm not even crazy about Mindfu, the Pokemon in general. But the whole reason I added her to the cast is because I knew I needed some Pokemon to get rid of early so I can make way for the more interesting characters. So that's the whole reason I added Mindfu. I'm like, I gotta get rid of her quick and easy. So I just did the first five episodes, just did her thing, and I'm like, okay, you're gone. Bye. See ya. And I never looked back. How did I come up with the characters for Abandoned, and are there any characters inspired by real life people? Well, the second question, the answer is absolutely yes. Um, but the first question, the inspiration, I wanted, I mean, I guess there are a lot of places to get inspiration from for the characters. Some were taken from TV, some were original ideas, some were ideas from the original Total Drama that I just elevated on. Like with Munchlax, how you normally expect like an Owen archetype for him, but I'm like, no, everyone always does that. And I don't, and I want this to stand out, so I'll just make Munchlax the more intelligent Pokemon, yet even though he's not an idiot, he always tends to make pretty stupid decisions. That's the ironic thing with Munchlax. And then, of course, I had the more creative characters like Bergmite and Doduo, who are characters I don't think have really ever been quite done before on a show like this. I'm not really sure. But there have absolutely been some characters inspired by real-life people. Like I said, Magby was inspired by me a little bit. And going back to Grovile, he was inspired a little, little bit by someone I used to know in high school. My first year of high school, there was a guy in my choir class. He was a junior, I was a freshman, and I only saw him that one year because after that he moved. But he had just like a really deep voice. He was quite the charmer with the ladies, and I'm like... And when I was crafting this character, I'm like, you know what, I think that guy may have just inspired me with something pretty funny. And I haven't talked to the guy in a long time, He so he has absolutely no idea that Grovile's based off of him. But... I'm sure if Abandoned continues, I've got some other ideas in mind. I've met some pretty crazy people over the years, so I'm sure there are going to be more characters inspired by the craziness I've had to deal with on a daily basis. Who would you align with on Abandoned if I could choose two allies? That is a really tough question, but if I were in Abandoned, and this were me, I would probably go with two allies who I was absolutely sure were tight. I wouldn't go with any alliance that I knew has some fractures in it or I was sure were going to break up, like that they were inevit inevitably going to break up. 
So I have two choices in terms of two groups of people. I would pick either Tyrog and Eevee or Electric and Magnet, because those seems those seem to be the two most solid duos out of anyone in the cast. I know Electric has his alliances with Flaffy and Dua, but with the whole love triangle there, that's that might not be the most solid thing to get myself into. So Electric and Magby seem to have a pretty solid final two deal, but I could easily work my way into there. I mean, they seem pretty, they're really trustworthy, they're not gonna stab me in the back. And Tyrog and Eevee, they tend to be a little more paranoid, I think, thanks to the whole Riolu incident, but they are close with each other, they know what to do, they're smart players, and they're ones I would much rather have on my side than not on my side. So if I had to pick between one of the duos, I'd probably pick them because they seem to be focusing a lot more on the game itself. So my picks for my two allies would be Tyrog and Eevee. How do I normally structure my eliminations? So someone asked if like I thought of them as I went or if I just randomly chose an elimination order and built a story around it. And I guess sort of, but not really. I mean, I already have the elimination order set for abandon. I have the winner in mind. I'm obviously not going to say who it is, but... And I've had this elimination order in mind since Abandoned has been conceived. It's been the exact same elimination order with, like, one exception, of course, being Totodile not returning, Bergmite returning instead, but I'm not going to talk about that. So, my big thing is, I thought of the character personalities first, and then I sort of did this thing where I'm like, okay... I have all the characters here, who would I want to see more of after, like, the first ten episodes? So then I would constantly, like, move characters from one group to another, like... Electric, yeah, I need him to stick around. Um, Duat, yeah, he needs to stay. Groval, he needs to stay. Mind Fu, no. Fennekin, I don't really need her. Um, Corfish, I might send him home, but then bring him back, because I can use more from him. That's kind of how I utilized it. I, and then once that group was done, I would take the ten who I knew were not moving on after the first ten episodes, craft them into a nice conceivable order, and then leave those set, and then rinse, repeat. Basically, I would just figure out who I wanted to move forward and who I felt didn't need to go on anymore, if that makes any sense. But it's it was kind of like a puzzle. Who made the most sense to put in the merge, who made the most sense to put during the team switch, who made the most sense to be eliminated early, and then once I got the plan in place, I'm like, I got a show. This makes the most sense. What's the best part about being a TBI creator? I guess just showcasing what I've been able to learn over the years and making you guys laugh, because that's always been my goal, to make you guys laugh and to give you really great content, and the fact that I also get to do what it is that I love doing. That's probably the best part about being a TPL creator. Outside of Abandoned, have I ever thought about other types of shows on my channel? I'll be honest, I have thought about other types of shows to do. Again, mostly centered around comedy. I did briefly consider, um, just ironically, abandoning Abandoned before, before it was ever a thing, before it was ever premiered, and doing a like, a, just a standard sitcom show with, like, Pokemon, like, trainer sprites, almost, in, like, a high school setting. I, I didn't have the idea for very long, but I thought, you know what, I could maybe do something with that. I'm not gonna rule out anything like that, but right now that's definitely not in the cards, and most likely I probably won't do anything else like that on the channel, simply because, I mean, if you got, if you do juggle those other types of shows on your channel, that's great. I just don't think I would be able to do that. I think it's better if I just stick to one show, and then once that's done, I move on to something else. That's that's what I think is just best for me. What is my favorite TBI? Okay. This might seem kind of bad, but there really are not that many TBIs I've actually seen. And I've tried to... I keep telling myself, I'm gonna watch more TPIs, I'm gonna watch more TPIs. I made the thing on DeviantArt, like, a long time ago, asking you guys, and I never ended up falling through on that. That's another thing I really, really want to work on for this year, and that is to actually watch more TPIs, watch your guys' content, engage in your shows like you guys have engaged in mine. 
especially because in a future episode, I may need some of the TPI hosts to come in and help out Bisharp in a situation. I can't give anything else away, but I may um, ask some of you guys to lend your voice. Who knows? And I think it's better to do that if I've actually seen your show. But I'm absolutely going to start watching shows. In fact, if you have any shows you recommend watching, please leave them in the comments below, and I will watch them, and I will comment on them to let you know that I have seen them. Um, but as for my favorite TPI right now, probably the one I followed the most is Emerald Star Show, AXC, Enter the Zone. That's a pretty solid TPI, and one that I really enjoyed, but, like, stopped for some... Like, it hasn't made a new episode in, like, almost a year, but I still really, really enjoyed what I had seen so far was Bayo Cakes show. Uh, for the Total Pokemon Island, that was like back in, that was like used the time machine to go back to 2008. I thought that was really creative, really cool, and it was really funny. So Bayo, if you're watching this, please continue making that show. It was really, really awesome. But I'd say those are my answers right now. I've also watched Susan's show. That's really good. I started watching Will's show. That's really good too. Um, I, need, I know there's a lot more I need to watch. I've heard The Island Strikes Back is really good, but I need to watch his first season before that. But I'll get to those really, really soon, I promise. But for now, those are my answers. AXC and Bayo's show were both really funny, and I also enjoyed Will and Susan's. Um, what other TPIs have I watched? Well, I guess I just answered that question. Am I open to watching any less qual lesser quality TPIs? Absolutely. Whatever you guys have to offer, I will watch and I will tell you guys what I think about it. I mean, I understand some people may not have the same the same tools or the same um, the same like knowledge when it comes to making a TPI, and that's okay. As long as you enjoy making your show, that's the most important rule when it comes to making a TBI. As long as you are having fun doing it, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. But no matter what the quality of the show is, I will absolutely watch it, and chances are I will probably really enjoy it. If I could co-write a TPI with any PokeTuber, current or retired, who would it be? Um, I mean, working with um, Telly would be pretty awesome, but I've always really wanted to work with Nicky Nor too, because he's who got me into making TPIs in the first place. So I guess that's someone else I watched. I mean, I, I think he's the inspiration behind a lot of people, but I really enjoyed his show, laughed my butt off watching it, but I know he's been out of the game for a really, really, really long time, and I don't think he's ever coming back. But if he does, I'd love to work with him. I think it would be awesome to talk to the godfather that started all of this and to learn from him. I think that would be a really cool experience. Any plans for Abandoned Season 2? I'm not gonna confirm Abandoned Season 2, I'm also not gonna deny Abandoned Season 2. I do have plans for it. If I do a Season 2, I am probably gonna do like the film lots, have challenges based off of movies, kind of like what most people usually do, and I know that's kind of cliched, but the reason I really want to do that is because A, I've never gotten that far before, and B, I have a lot of knowledge when it comes to movies, TV shows, and pop culture in general. I think I could sneak a lot of that stuff into Season 2, I'd have a lot of fun making it. And I would probably also combine that with the musical part of Season 3. So like it would be, it would kind of be like total drama action but with the songs every, ev almost every single episode because I wanted to showcase my singing voice a little more if I ever continued to band it. And then that would be my plan for Season 2. And then I'm absolutely not doing a Season 3 for Abandoned, but instead I actually had something else planned after that, which I guess is kind of considered Season 3, but it's not really. Because, again, during the time in between TPIs, I watched Redonculus Race, and I loved it. And I thought, you know what? No one has done a Redonculus Race TPI on on YouTube yet. At least I don't think so. So I actually briefly considered doing that instead, but I scrapped it. But then I thought, you know what, I could do two seasons of Abandoned, and then I could do a season three, which would just be Redonculus Race. And I actually had a name in mind for it, it would be called Happy Trails, and it would also be hosted by Bishop. But if Abandoned ideally does reach that full milestone, that's or that full run-through, 
that's what you can expect. Season 1, Season 2, and Happy Trails. But that would be it, just those three. But again, I don't know if I'm going to do those. Right now my plan is maybe just doing Season 1, but you never know. We'll see. What will happen after you finish Abandoned? Whether it be after I finish the first season, or whether, like I said, I finish all that I would love to finish. Um, I think I would maybe go to a different YouTube channel. And not that I don't love this channel. I do, of course. It's I've had this channel since I was like 12 years old. But I think if I were to do something different, I would probably want like more of a fresh start. Like a complete different channel and to just create completely different content. I don't know what I would do. Maybe I'd just talk into the camera like this, tell stories. Maybe I would just... Maybe, maybe I'd do some music stuff, maybe I'd do skits, I don't know yet. Uh, the future's uncertain, but whatever it is, I'm, I'm open to anything in the future. We'll just have to wait and see. And the last question, what's the best advice you could give to someone making their own TPI that you wish you had known prior to starting? I guess, make sure you really, really love the cast, and make sure that you really, really love like the story and the concept and everything you've worked on because if you love it then that tells you like, the more you love something the more empowered you are to actually get it out there and get it released to the public because if you're not crazy about something then chances are you're going to end up procrastinating a little bit more on what it is you're working on but just make sure that everything to you looks good make sure the characters have a clear storyline, make sure the storyline actually makes sense. I guess just make sure it feels like a show and not just a bunch of jokes slammed together into tr in trying to make some sort of a cohesive storyline. The most important thing, make sure it makes sense. All right, whew, that is it. Those are all the questions I was given and I have answered all of them. I hope those were good enough answers. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you guys for tuning in all these years. I hope you enjoy what's to come, and I think this 2319 day has been a pretty good success. So, I mean, I'm never going to be able to celebrate this day again, but I'm glad I was able to celebrate it today, and I'm glad I was able to celebrate it with you guys. So that's it. I hope episode 18, again, trying to work hard on it. Hopefully that will be out before February is done. I am making that a goal, a firm goal. Be on the lookout for that. That's it, guys. 239 am I, signing out. My voice is 